Hello guys and welcome to this 1000 subscriber video special. In this video I'm going to be showing you all of my snakes and lizards, the full collection. I'm going to be doing a dub over uh, with my voice, uh, with a video. I'm currently using the Samsung microphone right now. So I hope you guys really enjoy it. And here we go, we're off with the first snake and it's Frida. Enjoy guys. Okay, so um, this is Frida. Um, she's a king snake. And I've had her now for about five or six years, I think. She's a female Californian king snake. And here you can see me just showing off her pretty colours on the top of her head. Um, she's pretty much full size now, as you can see. Um, she's got a nice sort of, it's like a chocolatey, milk chocolatey stripe all the way down her. And then underneath, the same colour, but it envelops the entire entirety of her uh, underbelly so yeah she's a she's a little bit scatty you know sometimes when I pick her up and that she can be quite um, skitty and stuff like that but um, no no she's really really nice snake she's the only um, king snake that I have in my collection so I've got 11 snakes all together and um, yeah so she's a really really cool snake and um, I recommend a king snake or a corn snake as one of your beginner snakes to have if you don't want a ball python or something with a bit more size it's probably best to go with um, a king snake or a corn snake but definitely recommend the Californian a uh, really really cool patterning so yeah let's move on to the next snake okay so this is the second snake this uh, girl is a Mojave and her name is Blossom and she is one of three sisters uh, that I managed to get for a very very good price um, in London with a couple of other snakes as well so there's actually five snakes I got in total um, which has mean, meant that my collection has gone up quite significantly anyway as you can see here really really um, nice Mojave sort of colorings um, the sisters are slightly different in color but they're still showing the classic traits of a Mojave. Now, I believe that she is just about a year old, so I'm not gonna be able to breed her this year, but hopefully I'll be able to look at breeding her maybe next year or the year after. But yeah, she's a great feeder, and she's really, really nice snake. Okay, so now this one is a sister of Blossom, and this one is called Bubbles. Now she, as you can see, her colours are slightly better, you could say, a little bit brighter. Um, she's the same sort of size as her sister, they're all relatively the same sort of size. She's a great feeder and um, yeah, I've had her now for about, ooh, about three months I'd say. Yeah, three months I've had her for. Uh, as you can see her tail there, really, really nice, really, really great patterning. She's a nice size for her age as well. And just a really, really good temperament. Very, very, very aggressive feeders at night. But in the day, they're very, very docile, as you can see. And yeah, look, it's just a really, really good girth on a very healthy snake. And this is the final of the three sisters. This is Buttercup. As you can see, she's showing a bit more of like a caramel sort of colour. And that's the reason why I decided to name her Buttercup. Basically, the three names de are derived from the Powerpuff Girls, if you don't know. So she's got the name Buttercup because I thought that she was the most sort of caramel sort of colour. Even though she's a Mojave as well, um, I thought that that's, her sort of colour was best for that name. So yeah, once again, exactly the same sort of size, exactly the same sort of temperament. Really, really good snake. As you can see, she's just loving the camera there. They're so interested in the camera. There must be some sort of smell that the camera gives off that really intrigues them. But as you can see, really, really good colorings. Just great all round snake. Um, as I say, I got them for a great price, all five together. Um, it was the three Mojaves and you'll be seeing an albino soon, a little bit later. Um, and also a lesser. So yeah, on to the next snake. Okay, now this is my albino male named Albus uh, because he's nice white and yellow coloring classic albino coloring recessive gene the only sort of recessive that I have in my whole collection 
I tend to keep co-dominants um, because of the fact that they're a lot easier to breed and I don't like to be dealing with recessives. However, this little fella came in with the bundle of five and I had to go for him because he's just absolutely stunning. Um, he's a little bit bigger than the Mojave's so it suggests to me that he's probably a little bit older. Um, but yeah, fantastic looking snake, great temperament again. Can't recommend these guys enough. As I say, I got them for a steal. Um, if you put together all the snakes that I got on the equipment and the amount I paid and you split it evenly, evenly, sorry, I would say that they're probably about £30 each, £40 each, which is an absolute bargain for Mojaves and Albinos and Lessers. So I'm really, really happy. As you can see, look at that great colour in there. Just really, really good markings. Just love the red eyes. I can't get enough of the red eyes. I know they're standard, like Albinos are quite standard now, but yeah. Awesome. On to the next snake. Okay, and this is the last of the five that I bought in that really, really good bundle. This is Paul. Really nice name, simple name, lesser male, as you can see. Just beautiful colorings right there. I've discovered that the lesser is very, very similar to the butter. Um, now, I did have a butter um, snake called Sedna. Um, unfortunately she passed away um, I believe it was due to compaction I've never ever dealt with that before so it was just a complete shock to myself um, however I believe that Butter and Lesser are very similar and I'm looking to breed him with one of my adult females uh, probably Rosie she's my only adult female at this moment in time but I am looking to get another one in the future and it probably he would be involved with the breeding process as he's you know looking like the correct sort of size and age for it but yeah absolutely great the reason he's named Paul is because the person that we got the snakes from was named Paul and we just ran out of names really so yeah he's Paul nice and simple great colors right there as you can see great size once again great temperament can't fault him what a lad on to the next okay now we come on to the treasure of my collection the absolute gem that is Jim once again simple name however not a simple morph okay this male is about one and a half years old maybe a year old I'm not entirely sure however he is a butter spinner which is a three morph or three gene snake, which is a butter, a pinstripe, and a spider, all in one. Now you can see a lot of the butter there, the uh, yellowy color and the tinge. The spider, you can see the sort of trails coming down the side of the snake, and the pinstripe, which will be the top bit at the top. So the lines that follow all around the snake at the top, that would be the pinstripe. And also the coloring as well on the spine, as you can see on the spine, there's like a slightly different coloring that's the actual pinstripe factor and as you can see he's really bulky snake i mean look at him on the table there he's nice and chunky but as i say he's definitely going to be breeding um at the end of this year i'm going to really try i've never done it before breeding but i really want to get into it seeing as he's a three gene i've got to do it i mean just look at him he's amazing one of my favorite snakes fantastic just absolutely gorgeous his underbelly as well fantastic on to the next snake guys okay now we move on to the oldest snake that I have in my collection this is Rosie uh, adult female normal ball python I bought her for I believe it was 40 pounds back in oh god must have been about six or seven years ago now so when I was about 14 years old I think I got her when she was a little baby so she was my first snake ever she wasn't my first reptile um, Godzilla was who sadly passed and um, was the first one in my collection anyway as you can see she's very very chunky she's not that massive she could get a lot bigger at the moment I think she's nearly two kilos so you can easily get her up to two and a half kilos which is what I want to do um, when it comes close to the breeding season this year um, I'm kind of feeding her just once a month with a very very large rat um, but yeah she's got great length on her just very standard as I say you can pick snakes up like this now for dirt cheap but when I started they were 40 pounds for a female and 30 pounds for a male 
a baby a snake but now you can pick up a adult for 40 pounds it's crazy um, anyway yeah there you go once again getting attracted by the camera brilliant snake great temperament on her I've had her for years she's a keeper no matter what absolutely lovely snake anyway let's move on to the next snake and now we move on to the final ball python in my collection this is Marvin he's the second oldest ball python I've had the second ever snake that I've had and the largest male ball python I have in my collection as well um, he is a pastel or pastel a male ball python about five years old and I've tried to breed him with Rosie last year I only tried once I uh, wasn't too sure what I was doing and I don't think any, anything occurred so I'm going to try properly this year and see if I can get something to happen but he's definitely going to have a part to play in the breeding process at the end of this year but he is the heaviest male that I have he is I think heavier uh, or maybe about the same weight as Rosie so he really doesn't need to eat much more um, I'm kind of cutting food down and as you can see there's a bit of a shed he had a, a bit of a rough shed um, about a week ago or two weeks ago as you can see look it's easily you can just peel it off I tried peeling a lot of it off for him but there's still a little bit as you can see uh, it's a bit rough along his neck there near his head um, basically the causes of that can be just down to humidity it was a little bit low and it was a bit difficult for him to get off so I've tried to remedy that by putting the bowl near the heat mat so it creates that humidity but once again great snake on to the lizards okay so this is Luna she shares the enclosure with her brother Thorn as you can see giving her a nice stroke there she's about one and a half years old two years old um, I bought her from Gumtree with the full enclosure and the two were only about £100, great deal. She's a great girl, she's easy to handle, doesn't move around that much. And we're going to swoop on down now in a second to her brother, who's Thorn. If we just wait for the old camera to move on down, she's having a look down for him. And there he is. Thorn's got quite a funny bottom jaw, I think. His chin sort of pops out a little bit, which I think is kind of cute. Um, but yeah, he's a very, very big male. Uh, does like to look after his sister. When I had Godzilla, he was quite, you know, territorial with her when he could see him from the other side. But um, great companionship, never bred before. Lovely two lizards. Fantastic. On to the next. And here we come on to the final two, the two bows that I own. This is the youngest one. Her name is Zelda. She was from an expo, which is a Kempton Reptile Expo. She's about two years old very inquisitive snake she's more inquisitive than Ziggy very aggressive feeder fantastic face great eyes as you can see there looking around always inquisitive with her tongue poking out all the time I don't believe she's just a normal boa constrictor um, there were ideas that she had some salmon in there it's like a salmon like a very pinky sort of color on the underbelly and also her tail was a bit different and she looks a lot brighter overall compared to Ziggy um, but yeah fantastic snake great recommendation for maybe a second or third snake if you're looking for something different on to the next and here we come on to the final snake it's Ziggy now she is an absolute monster as you can see here huge girth on her just a normal uh, boa constrictor but she's the largest snake in my collection and you can see here I'll put her on the floor and you can just see how huge she is we do this different sort of view get down to her level I've had her for about five years, maybe six years now. She still isn't full grown. Um, I don't power feed her. I feed her once every three weeks, a very large rat. As you can see there, beautiful face, very calm. Really good shot I got of her here. Amazing. Great snake. Great temperament as well. Really good feeder once again. Better feeders than the um, ball pythons. Boa shits tend to be very good for that. And you can see, look, very intrigued by the camera once again. Don't worry, uh, my cats were out of the room and locked away at this time, so, because you can see the scratching post in the background, so don't get too worried about that. As you can see, I start to do like a view. Just to get an idea of how big she actually is, there's my foot, I'm size 11. So you can see 
how big she is. She's over six foot. Very nice snake. Really good temperament. And there we go. That's it. That's the final snake. That's my whole collection. There was one tarantula that I didn't record. Um, as I say, I used to have 15, but I've sort of veered away from that. Um, so yeah, that's it. That's the end of the uh, the snake collection. My 1,000 subscriber special video. Thank you very much, guys, for watching. Please subscribe to the channel. It's great to have you guys here, especially new followers, not just the ones that are also watching who are a follower. Anyway, it's great to have new people. Please hit that like button. Thank you very much, guys, and I'll see you in another video. Take care, guys. See ya.